Reese Oxenham, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well, thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, it's great to have you here. Uh, it's part of a multi-pod and webcast series that we're doing, uh, talking about what's going on at the edge in partnership with Red Hat. Thank you all for, for joining us. You are a director in the customer and field engagement organization at Red Hat. Give me the rundown. What does that mean you do every day? Sure. So I've been at Red Hat for around about 13 years now. Um, and the role has evolved over those years. Uh, started off doing a lot of solutions engineering type work. We moved into what we call a field product management direction. And over the years, I've built up a team that does or has two primary responsibilities. The first one is strategic customer engagement. So we work with customers worldwide, help them solve uh, a lot of the technical challenges, help understand the problems that they have with uh, technology and how Red Hat can potentially help uh, address them. And my team also builds a lot of technical assets, be those uh, blog posts, demo videos, explainers, white papers, those sorts of things that help our field teams go out there and scale the message and you know, help customers architect and implement solutions that really help them solve those challenges. Sounds like a big job, uh, a lot of opportunity right now. We are mm -hmm. seeing exponential growth. The edge is the biggest growth opportunity in IT for sure, yep. just based upon volumes of data. Of course, we've seen uh, you know, a back and forth architecture approach over the year, whether it's been client server and then centralized compute and then clients, you know, and this is kind of that next iteration. And now we've got this big infrastructure in the cloud, the public, the hybrid, which is something that Red Hat has a, a, a ton of um, you know, pedigree but yeah. you've yeah. been extraordinarily active in building this edge business, which is really interesting to me. Uh, having said that, um, you know, I'll start with a question for you that I, I like to ask every expert or person that kind of proclaims to have some knowledge about the edge is how do you define it? Yeah, so the way that I like to think about the edge is that really we're talking about a paradigm shift that fundamentally changes the physical location of uh, equipment, so you know, servers, uh, you know, networking infrastructure, storage, and so on. Um, moving the processing capabilities and the data storage away from the quote-unquote legacy centralized data centers, and much more towards the subscriber or the the end customer. Um, or it could even be you know, the source of the data if we're talking about a sensor or something like that. And there's a number of different reasons why this is happening and why edge is such a big thing today. And of course, it really ultimately depends on the use case or the customer, but more and more customers are looking at uh, edge configurations and shaking up the way in which they've been building their infrastructure to solve challenges around um, things like scalability for um, content delivery. Um, you think of the, um, you know, the, the, um, the Netflix of the world, um, rather than having lots of these big centralized data centers and having all of the huge bandwidth requirements of shipping out all of that video content out to you know, hundreds of thousands of uh, subscribers all over the world. And you think of the huge increases in consumption during the pandemic, can they push that data and the processing right close to those subscribers and you're putting out lots of these different uh, different edge sites you've also got things like reliability you don't want to be necessarily reliant on these core data centers can we not spread that out and push it much much closer to where it's actually going to be consumed and have you know lots more sites and, and uh, you know lots of larger ones you've also got to consider things like bandwidth latency and performance um, you're your data and the processing of that data is going to be much closer to those end users. And really all of these are really going to be increasing that, uh, increasing that, that efficiency and efficiency is king in, uh, in, in all infrastructure. So where that edge actually is really depends on the customer. Um, there's certainly no one size fits all when it comes to edge. And you'll likely hear me you know, say this a few times um, for some of our customers that, edge location could be just as simple as a remote office, you know, away from the corporate headquarters. For others, it could be as, sounds crazy, but it could be a train or a cruise ship. Um, and going right the other scale, it could be um, a, a telco provider where they have to try and uh, install infrastructure at an antenna site, and they have to try and serve their customers in a single cell. So location of the edge site and the requirements can certainly vary. So you covered a lot of ground there, um, and, and one of the things I heard that I think a lot about is is complexity. So, 
cloud offers or cloud or, or centralized data centers offer somewhat a streamlined approach, right? All the applications, all the workloads, all the data reside in one place, it's distributed. Uh, but you also, like you said, you have a lot of challenges that that creates, especially as applications require greater resources, you yeah. want zero latency, you got egress, if the data is being created, how does it get back to the cloud? So we're kind of in this era of right workload, right location, the data needs Correct. to move yeah. at the right speeds. But that's a lot, that adds a lot of complexity. So how do you address that complexity? Yeah, I, you know, data centers and the way that we build data centers and infrastructure, um, I don't want to say it's a solved problem. Nothing is a solved problem, right? But it's something we've been doing for a very long time. And when we start looking at shaking up that entire model and pushing you know, infrastructure into uh, much more complicated scenarios, perhaps where infrastructure has never really been before, at least never at the scale at which we're trying to implement, there are, as you say, a huge number of complexities, requirements that we're having to try and address as we start to embrace some of these edge opportunities. Um, and as I sort of said uh, just a couple of minutes ago, our customer requirements just vary hugely. Um, as I said, you know, it, it, it can be all the way from, um, you know, situations where you might have just a, a single machine or, you know, just a collection of machines in, 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 a, in, a, in a back office somewhere. And we could have a situation where people will be there in the location that, you know, worst thing happens, they can at least go in and they have physical access to those systems. And then on the flip side, we have customers that have very stringent requirements. Um, and, you know, I mentioned a previous example would be something like in the telco space. Um, and the infrastructure there is expected to operate in isolation, right? Zero intervention. And if there is any downtime, any problems, you know, how do you update and upgrade or anything like that? The resulting maintenance and the operational cost of that are huge. And so we really have to change our model and really think about tools and solutions to help address some of these customer challenges in a very, very changing world. Um, sorry, go on. So let me ask you, so let me ask you, um, what is the Red Hat answer? Because you know, you're not the only player in the space. So what right. are you guys doing to address this, to simplify and create, uh, you know, a, a process that these enterprises can, can manage with all that complexity? Yeah, so at Red Hat, we've been working, um, you know, hard on our um, OpenShift solution, of course, based on uh, based on Kubernetes. We've been doing this for a very long time, and we've been trying to build a solution that's capable of supporting uh, the widest variety of configurations. Um, we have to try and tolerate some of the most challenging requirements that our customers are, are asking of us. We also have to try and maintain that stability, secure, security has to be very, very performant, has to be very, very scalable, and we have to make sure that it can be operationalized. Your lifecycle management is, of course, incredibly um, important. And we have to try and do this for a wide variety of workloads. You know, customers are coming from a traditional, you know, uh, a virtualization um, platform. Um, they also want to think about bare metal capabilities. Containerized applications are, of course, of the norm. And so we have to try and do this in a, a standardized way, whilst also understanding that customers also have a wide variety of hardware configurations. Um, you know, some have the luxury of running full or more, more traditional hardware that you'd find inside of a data center. Um, it's just done on a much smaller scale and they have connectivity back to a, a, a centralized uh, core. Some customers want to run much smaller, very specialized infrastructure, even in a disconnected configuration, sometimes just on a single node. And so we have to really think about some of these, um, some of these solutions. And so today um, we provide three uh, different core um, topologies on how our customers can deploy our OpenShift container platform for edge configurations. Um, the first one is what we call single node. The second one is something which we call a uh, three node compact. And then the third one um, is remote worker nodes. And uh, what we're trying to do, you know, thinking about consistency, all of these have to be deployed um, with uh, support for uh, uh, Red Hat Advanced Cluster Manager for you know, consistency in management uh, and deployment and lifecycle management and so on and so forth. And also they have to be secured end to end. And that's where our uh, Red Hat Advanced Cluster Security for Kubernetes comes in. And I'd be more than happy to talk about some of these yeah. technologies if you'd like. No, absolutely. Uh, for this episode, I want to keep moving because, uh, you know, want to keep this, you know, 
short and, and get that uh, education out there for that listener, but this could definitely provide an opportunity to, to dive deeper into this stuff, Reese. Mm -hmm. you, you started on something. First of all, I just want to simplify everything you just said. Some Getting to some specific use cases is really important as it helps streamline that expediency in deployment at scale, despite the fact that there are special complexities, there are also consistencies that you're identifying. And that's why you've taken those three approaches is to address the fact that there are volumes of certain types of workloads being deployed at the edge. I want to wrap with a quick question uh, mm -hmm. from the developer side. So, you know, when you're developing apps with the edge in mind and edge topologies in mind, what are you seeing? Is there any big changes or what are what should developers and IT teams be thinking about that might be different than, you know, previous generations? Yeah, I, I guess I'd probably want to give you a fairly simple and straightforward answer to that. Um, this is still OpenShift. Right? We have the same principles around application deployment, lifecycle management, all of those same things still exist. Um, you know, of course, edge applications, they have um, you know, their own limitations, requirements, and expectations, and the way that we, we, we manage the type of infrastructure, we've had to adapt our tools in the way that we do it. Um, but it's still done in the same way as any other OpenShift cluster. Consistency is incredibly important for us here at Red Hat, and that's why we are trying to embrace this new world, you know, various different application platform, very sorry, various different application types, new infrastructure requirements, and building a tool that can move with our customers and provide that consistency, regardless of whether you're building, uh, you know, an on-premise, more traditional type infrastructure, utilizing the public cloud, a managed service offering, or indeed you are pushing the boundaries with some more edge configurations. Consistency is absolutely key for us. Well, I think that's been a big part of what's made Red Hat successful uh, as hybrid cloud has proliferated and now as edge proliferates is that the consistency and making sure that those that have been building and developing with Red Hat do, don't undergo major shifts in how they're going to approach their continued uh, you know, deployments and growth of their architectures on a global scale. Reese Oxenham, I'd love to talk to you more. Got to go for this episode, but thanks so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. Have a good day.